Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today's going to be a little bit different from my room. And uh, I've been asked by some of you guys to show my collection and whatnot. And I figured today would be a good day to do that because I haven't been uploading a couple weeks because uh, of weather and whatnot. Um, it's been rainy and cold and it's just been terrible here in Indiana. Normally when uh, in late November it starts to rain and it'll drop down to 30 or 40 degrees and so it makes making videos outside uh, miserable. But anyway, here's a part of my collection. This is just some stuff up here that I found throughout uh, antique stores. A bunch of just little stuff like tins and uh, little fused tins and whatnot. I got my jars up there. Um, here's some sodas. Some there's uh, the Bloomington 1915 I dug. A Pluto water that I have paper labeled. Pepsi, Cherokee, some straight sides. Got some other stuff back there that I really don't feel like getting out. I'm just gonna like pan through here. I'm not gonna go through everything because it would take a lot of time. Um. Here's some other stuff. Here's all my meds that I got down here. Bunch of local ones like that Dr. A. Bob Parr. Uh, here's some stuff over here that I've dug and found in creeks too. Uh, here's some local pharmacy balls I've bought. Uh, some other stuff down there too. Um, move this out of the way. Some other uh, extracts and liniments back there. Some more meds down here. I got the Chamberlains right here. I really like these. I don't know why it's not focusing. Just a second, see if I get the focus. That's weird. I don't know why it's all on the focus. Mm. Anyway. I've uh, dug both of those trampolines. And some other stuff. All this is mixed in. Some of it I bought. Some of it I've dug. Some of it still needs cleaning. And whatnot. And other stuff up here. That paper label is awesome. I, uh, that is about a 1907 blown and mold uh, Pluto water. I've not, I've yet to see another one like that with the original seal on top ever opened the uh, contents and it had actually evaporated. So, pretty cool. Got some more sodas down here. Got a Sun Punch Art Deco over there with uh, Carnival Glass from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, the Bloomington Star and Boss Coca Cola bottles Art Deco. That was about 1923, 24. Uh, those are hard to find. If anyone has any information on those, let me know. You really can't find much about them. Um, I painted this one because that had creek rash on it because I found it in a creek and I just highlighted over it with uh, some white paint. Looks nice. Um, the only one that has ever sold on eBay went for $202, which is pretty crazy because. I thought these were quite common, but apparently they're not. I, but I don't know too much information on them. But they're interesting. Uh, got a Royal Palm Soda from Linton, Indiana with a palm tree on it. That's a pretty nice pictorial art, art deco there. Coca-Cola Byline Works. That's a squeeze back there from Kokomo. Got some other stuff back there. Uh, if anyone's from uh, St. Louis, contact me. I am selling this. It is a pontilled mineral water, I believe what it is, 1860s, in really good condition. The only damage is uh, that right there, that little, little chip. I don't know why the camera's not focusing today. It's weird. But it's pretty nice. It's got uh, a few scratches or little dings throughout, 
But like I said, that's the major damage right there. That's the only uh, chip of glass that's missing is that little ding up there. So if you're interested in that, it's for sale. Contact me. Selling it for uh, 60 bucks. That's about what I got it for. And over here are my hutches and some other sodas on this side. Got a MRS. That was actually the first hutch I ever had in my collection right here. Um, it, it's rare. It's from Indianapolis. I picked it up for $20. And it's actually uh, around $70 to $100. So that's actually quite nice. Got a JC Yonker Indianapolis hutch over there. Uh, J.C. Yonker started in Indianapolis in 1907, uh, making a range of flavors from uh, root beer, ginger, ale, uh, cream soda, and grape. They uh, eventually bought the Coca-Cola bottling franchise for Indianapolis in 1915, and later made a Coca-Cola bot or built a Art Deco style Coca-Cola bottling works in Indianapolis and became or used to be the biggest Coca-Cola bottling works in the world. They outproduce or they produced like two million dollars worth of Coke in like a week or two. It was ridiculous. Or they were very successful. It was probably one of the most successful uh, bottlers in America. And they're pretty impressive. Got a mug base, uh, auto, South Bend, Indiana, touch. That one's pretty good. Got a Elkhart over here, Elkhart, Indiana. That's a Samuel Stone. And got some other stuff over here. This is another one I'd be willing to part with here. It's a Circleville Mineral Water from Circleville, Ohio. It's quite nice. In good condition. Uh, no chips or cracks on this one. But that one's for sale. If you want to comment down or contact me. If you're interested. Got some other stuff back here. Got a rare Easton PA. That's a Seltzer BR Co. From Easton PA. Or uh, Pennsylvania. And some other stuff back there. There's a lot back here. That's a Marion Bottling Works. And that's a Logan's Port Star Embossed. Here's a, uh, I actually have two of these. Both of them have lip damage. This is actually the first uh, Yonker Bottling Works from Indianapolis, Indiana. Same company as that Hutch down there. This is the first one I ever got my hands on. I dug two of these, both of them with uh, lip damage. This one's the worst. Um, but this one is from stupid. Camera is really being stubborn today. Anyway, the code date on that's uh, 1918. And the other one's from 1911. So those are my very first Yonker Bottling Works bottles. And that's the, how I started to get to know that company. Um, there's some, uh, orange crushes back there. Um, I know I do have some, uh, Indiana ball diggers who watch my channel. Uh, do you have any idea what this is? It's cracked all get out, but the only embossing it has on it is Bloomington, Indiana on the bottom. And, uh. It's it's blank, like it doesn't say. I assume it would have a paper label. It says content seven ounces. Now, I have no idea what that one would have been. Um, got a Martinsville bottling works back there. It's pretty cracked up. Celery, cola. Here's more of the meds up here. Got a little dose bottle here. This is uh, from Indianapolis. Oh my gosh. Camera's being really annoying. But yeah. 
I tried. I have this uh, video on a setting. It apparently focuses on my voice more. I think the other option was probably quality, so that's probably why it's not focusing well. Like if I try to focus on these straight side cokes here, it's just being weird. Huh. But anyway, moving on. I do need to get another one of these uh, display cases right here as I'm running out of room. But uh, thankfully my birthday and Christmas is coming up, so that'll be great. Got some bricks down here. As you guys all know, I do some brick videos here and there. Um, I'll probably be doing one maybe this weekend. Maybe not. I might be going digging. Like I said, it just varies on the weather because when it gets in that late November here in Indiana, it just wants to rain and crap on us so just to deal with it got some insulators up here i'm actually selling these i'm actually starting to get rid of my insulator collection because uh i just like collecting bottles more and i feel more attached to it i just like digging good local bottles and all the variants and whatnot and everything out there or even bottles that aren't local it's just they're interesting but uh, if you're interested, these are for sale. Uh, this one's actually already sold. This uh, sold to a guy in Illinois, so I need to package that up and send that over there. But uh, the the uh, CD162 Amber is still there. It's the uh, only damage is that chip out of the wire ridge and some uh, teeth missing. I'm not really going to go over them. Just contact me if you're interested. Got a opalescent CD 160 or 160, 128. Brookfield, some uh, Hemingway 12 with some uh, milk swirls in it. Hemingway 9 with a bunch of fizzy bubbles in it. And some other stuff back there. <laughs> and some more down here. I'm going to eventually go through those. But here's some more meds back here. These are mostly common. Like, got a. Uh, uh, McCormick's right here, Baltimore. And uh, some other extracts back there. This one's probably the highlight out of this group. It's a Pontill Dr. Jane's Expectorian. I actually dug a 1890s version of this in a uh, video a while ago. But I picked this at the Cambridge... Uh, city or yeah cambridge city bottle show for 20 bucks not too bad for a 1840s bond tilled medicine but it's in great condition got a jug there I dug that in a video a while ago but all this i dug mostly besides those two back there uh that's uh Heinz honey and almond cream uh lotion um dr j hoster's bitters if you want to know my opinion on those bitters balls i actually kind of hate them because the only reason i hate them is because they're so common i'm actually looking for a uh, a certain bitters ball i've actually been looking for for quite some time it is rare it is the uh like it's the same company as the chamberlains it's actually dr van hoofs or hoffs uh, in Chamberlain, it was uh, when Chamberlain worked with Dr. Van Hoof because Dr. Van Hoof originally owned the uh, medicine company, the drug company, and then he passed away, I believe, and then Chamberlain took over, and hence the name Chamberlain's uh, Medicine Co. So, a little interesting fact for you. I got some beers down here. Uh, most of these I've dug. Dug that in a previous video. Uh, I got some Chicago ones back here. Those are actually are pretty early ones that I found in uh, earlier videos uh, of my channel. Got some Terre Haute ones over there. Some of these I've found. Uh, that one over there I found too. Uh, this is a Savannah one back here. I'd be interested in getting rid of this if anyone wants it. Got a light amethyst uh, collar to it. And that's the only damage right there is that chip out of the neck. Besides that, it's pretty great. Circle slugs of amber and 
Mexico. I really like that bottle. I wish we uh, got some uh, some of those bottles up here north that had that amethyst color. It uh, seems to be more of a southern thing with bottles. They get that amethyst uh, sun, uh, from the sun, from them being sat in the sun for so many years. But for some reason, you don't come across that up here in Indiana, which is weird, but whatever. Uh, down here, some Listerines back there, chemical ball right there. I'm not going to get any, any of that stuff. That's just stuff that still needs to be cleaned up, and it's uh, it's pretty common. Just some extracts of stuff bottled back there. Uh, and just a bunch of slicks, really. So, oh, and I go over this. That's actually a chunk of melted glass I found out of the dump. Pretty cool. Wash it up. Makes a great little display piece. And uh, here's some milk glass. This is actually my favorite milk glass I've ever found. It's a Frank Co. American Hygienic Co. from Chicago. Really cool. Really like that. Uh, going over here, this has been my main focus this year. Um, I've gotten interested in, into Bromos and Bromo copycats, so I have a bunch over here. Uh, all listing from Butts of Bromo Lithia to some other Bromo seltzer bottles right up here. More Bromos right there. Paper labeled celery FOMO. That was another one. A uh, smaller one back here. And then a 20s, 30s Bromo seltzer. Still in the original box and everything. Um, this one's very hard to come by. Any. Any medicine bottle really back then, from the turn of the century and before, is uh, and around the teens and 20s, I guess you could say. Uh, really hard to find with the paper label and unopened. Really hard. Here's some other ones over here. I really wish I could focus this stupid camera. Honestly, it's just terrible. All right, <clears throat> I'm back. I got a, a different resolution on this uh, uh, setting, so it's way better. The audio might sound a little bit different, but got a Bromo caffeine right here, uh, Bromo soda with the paper label and original contents. That's very hard to come by. Uh, there's only a couple out there with uh, the original paper label and uh, unopened. Got a Bromo mint, some Bromo lithias here. That one's obviously paper labeled, unopened. Bromo mint with caffeine. Uh, Laptic pills, that's a sharpened domes. That's what's, what's even harder to come across these bottles with the original paper label and unopened is the original box. I'll get this down to uh, show you guys. But uh, I'm going to put it over here. This is a uh, sharpened domes, and most of you. Uh, I would say you're familiar with it. This original Sharpened Domes Laptic Pills. It's a paper label. And the pill's still in there. And some of you guys might be asking, like, how do you come across this stuff? It's literally just eBay. If you search the right stuff, you can find some incredible uh, finds. It's just insane. I have come across some really rare bottles and they're so, sometimes they're marked up a little high sometimes they're in the right value range and then sometimes they're listed too high and then sometimes they're just listed for some really nice low prices that you get a real good deal and it's like it's a steal so it's nice uh here's some other ones this is a uh that's a bromo celery these are some caffeinos. The clear ones are the hardest one to find because uh, medicine faded back then. Or they at least they believe that. I'm not hundred percent sure if that was true, but uh, that's why you don't see a whole lot of medicine bottles back then that were made in clear glass. That's a caffeine. I'd say it's probably 1880s, 1890s. So it's pretty early. Another caffeine right there. Wires lemon seltzer. 
that's a very tough Roma copycat to come by. Uh, say it's 1890s. It's even tough to come across that bottle in general. And I know collectors who have uh, one of those bottles in the paper with the original paper label and uh, contents and it never opened. Got some celery uh, this here. This is actually local to me, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. I actually just bought the largest version of this. I have three sizes, and once uh, the other one comes in the mail, I'll have all four sizes that they made, which is pretty awesome. I really am dying to get one of those with the paper label and unopened. That'd be awesome to have. Got a Chris Wells Bromo Pepsin down here, another Bromo Seltzer. These are just two original Bromo Seltzers that are from the Baltimore, Maryland from Emerson. Uh, this one's a rare one. It doesn't have a dash in the center like uh, like this one does. It's the, that little dash in between the Bromo and Seltzer. This is an unopened Bromo Seltzer. I actually just bought one off of eBay. Another one with the uh, paper label. I don't think it has the original contents, but it still has a paper label. It's still pretty hard to find. Uh, a Celery Reside Drug Co. from Baltimore. It's another one. Here's some uh, Chef's Celery Caffeine from Richmond, Virginia. That was Richmond's uh, version of a Bromo copycat. Got another Bromo Caffeine. That's a Red Dragon Seltzer. Very hard to come by in a green. Celery This, another one. It's a medium size. Got some Bell Ands down here. Another one. Uh, it's a paper label one. There's some other tens and hires extract over here. What not? Got some milks up here. That's my favorite right there, got eBay. The Union Union Dairy Co. from Indianapolis, Indiana. A pin a bowling pin tin style with a clover leaf in the middle. That's about nineteen eleven to nineteen seventeen. That's a really nice early one. Here you got some Kesby and Madison. These are another Bromo uh, copycat. Uh, another paper label unopened. It's a pretty cool one. Pretty tough to come by. Uh, all these bottles are these are literally the same thing as this one, except it's just a larger size. So those are really nice bottles. But uh, that's all. Uh, it's a Bromo Seltzer sheet music up there advertisement. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think that is all. I didn't go through every single thing. Like I said, it would take a couple hours. It would probably take a long time, especially with me jabber on about every single bottle because the history is just, there's so much history tied to this stuff. But uh, I will uh, hopefully have a video up this weekend either digging or bottle or either digging or creek walking so if you guys enjoyed please like leave a comment uh, and follow me at sam underscore what all underscore o2 on instagram and uh, please consider subscribing if you enjoyed thanks so much for watching